welcome to another exciting edition of the Kwacha Making Program. If you are just joining us, this is a program that is tailor-made for entrepreneurs, those who are already established and those who are aspiring to enter into business in various sectors. Last week, we took a look at PACRA and they gave us the guidelines on how one can actually register a company. Today we'll take a switch and we will be talking to the Zambia Communications Technology Authority, ZICTA, and find out what they are all about and what their core functions are, amongst other things. I am your host, Liseli Kanyanga. Join me after the break. Kingdom doors for security steel doors, single powder doors, double black copper, double pure copper, double glass, double powder, mother and son powder doors, mother and son black copper, mother and son pure, single chocolate, kitchen doors with ventilation, double glass doors with fan light, interior flash doors, aluminium bathroom and toilet doors, aluminium sliding windows and doors. Get quality selling boards here, wallpapers, chandeliers and different assorted lighting. For more details, call us today or come in person along Cafe Road next to China Mall or Metropolitan Complex. Thank you so much for staying with us on another exciting edition of the Kwacha Making Program. As promised, I have an official from the Zambia Information Communications Technology Authority, ZICTA, no other than Mr. Patrick Mutimushi, the Acting Director General. How are you? I'm all right. It's, uh, it's good to be here. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. First things first, who is Zikta? Okay. Um, Zikta, like you have said in the beginning, uh, stands for Zambia Information and Communication Technology Authority. We are basically an ICT regulator who sees that uh, the sector is um, moving very well in terms of competition and that players in the market have got um, a level playing field as they provide services to uh, Zambia. So basically we look and take care of the ICT sector. Okay, so maybe you can share with us some of your core functions as an authority. Great. Um, our core functions, or we draw our functions uh, from three acts. The first one being um, act, number 20, act number 15 which is the Information Communication Technologies Act, which was passed in 2009. The other one is the Electronic Communication Technology Act, which is Act number 21, and passed in 2009 as well. Then we also have the Act um, known as the Postal Services Act, uh, which is Act um, number 21. Um, all these acts were passed in 2009. Um, just from the name, names itself, you'd be able to see that um, we deal with the ICT platform or the subsector. We also deal um, with the ECT, um, uh, 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 which is electronic commerce and, and so on, and of course the postal services uh, which we deal with. So that's where our core functions um, and that's where we, we draw our mandate from. Okay, that's quite a lot to do. Absolutely, and, and if you see, um, for example, in the ICT Act, um, one of the issues that we deal with is also extension of services uh, to nearly all the parts of this country. And within that, we've got programs um, commonly known as universal access, where we're able to um, uh, move where we are and make sure that ICT services are promulgated everywhere in the country. Okay. I know one may ask, what is in it for a consumer? What are the, their rights and obligations when it comes to the authority? Great. Um, in accessing ICT services or any particular services, I think a customer has obligations and also their rights. If we talk about rights, is that when I'm getting a service from a service provider, definitely service that I must enjoy. Number one, my right, which is if I spend money, I must get quality services from the service provider who's giving me those services. Um, there must be full disclosure meaning I should understand the type of agreement in which I'm engaging myself with that provision which I'm getting from, um, uh, from any service provider. Importantly, when we talk about ICTs, it is very critical to note that we need to have emergency services available on a 24-7 basis, um, meaning that if I'm going to make a call and my call is an emergency service, it should be a priority call. Um, depending on the situation and what we've done as an authority and uh, mostly world over 
is that we have put up special numbers, um, things like 911, uh, 993, um, which specifically deal with saving lives. So those are some of the rights that um, a consumer has. Um, importantly as well is that I must not um, be, uh, there shouldn't be any part, any, anything to do with discrimination. For example, if I'm applying for a service, I'm not, I must not be discriminated against. Um, now, when it comes to obligation, obviously, when you talk about um, uh, getting a service from any service provider, you need to pay for it. It is important that um, you pay the service that you're getting. Once you pay, um, you should be able to get a quality service um, uh, which you've paid for. And again, um, most importantly, <clears throat> especially on the ICT platform, I think it's an obligation on the part of a consumer also to be aware the effects and impacts on what we do on this platform. I'm talking in terms of aspects of um, the lovely applications that we have. We've got WhatsApp, we've got Facebook and so on. Obviously we must be uh, such a consumer that is a concerned consumer, not uh, to involve an alarm, you know, send messages that are just bringing in hate speech and so on. So it is very, very critical that as consumers, we are obligated to ensure that what we transmit on this platform is also containing or within the norm that not only protect ourselves as individuals, but protecting the lovely country that we Okay. I know you mentioned things to do with uh, social media, but I think we'll be getting a little bit more into detail. Um, let's say, for instance, I am an aspiring service provider, let's say um, uh, a network provider. What, what, what is the licensing framework for me to enter into that sector? Correct. Um, today, I think uh, we've got the current licensing framework as um, basically two broad categories of licenses. We've got the network service license and network licenses. Under the network, um, licenses, uh, under network licenses, we've got subcategories where um, the network license allows one person or a company to be able to provide network services or network facility services. In there, we've got a mobile cellular network, we've got fixed uh, 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 networks, and we also have, I think, private network services. What it entails is that within those categories, um, they are also sub, uh, big, um, uh, they are subdivided into individual licenses. These individual licenses are big licenses that the authority would um, ordinarily uh, issue them, not just by walk in and walk out. It is something that can go through a process, uh, maybe through a tender, uh, tendering process, something called a beauty contest, and these are licenses such as mobile cellular networks. Then um, we also have class licenses. These are class licenses where you basically walk in into the authority and say, I'm applying for a license. For a, a typical example is an ISP license. That's a class license. If you've got, if you are technically and financially capable, you should be able to walk in um, into the authority and make the application and you'll be able to get that. Uh, on the service license, we also have the mobile cellular service license. Then there's international voice tra uh, traffic, meaning you can uh, get um, an international gateway license where you provide international services in terms of voice. And obviously, um, we also have got uh, the fixed one, where you've got uh, the common landline phones. Um, currently in this country, I think the landline provider is only Zamtel. Um, and those are type of licenses that we can issue. Even within those, we also have got um, um, uh, class licenses where you can easily just walk into the authority and say, you know what, number one, I want a private network license, I want a radio paging license, um, which then uh, you make formal application, uh, you, fill in up, you fill up the form, and then assessment is done. Vetting is done based on the aspect of uh, technically competent and also financial. Uh, status of the application that you're making. Okay, you mentioned earlier issues to do with um, social media and there are all sorts of things coming up like uh, cyber bullying and whatnot. What is the role of Zikta in, in cyber security? Great. Um, you see, um, number one, cyber security um, or um, uh, cyber platform or the cyber space is a very, I would say, volatile if we don't contain it. Uh, I'm not meaning in terms of WhatsApp, in terms of uh, um, uh, 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 cyberbullying and so on. Firstly, 
you're looking at the ICT sector and you're looking at the platform that are available. Every network that is available is interconnected. Um, typical example we're looking at is if you look at Zesco uh, network, Zesco's network, they've got their national control center here in Lusaka. They are able to maintain and sustain their electricity grid uh, by sitting in Lusaka and look what's happening and so on. And you can imagine a situation where um, one is able to hack into the system because all these are computer systems and turns this country into blackness. And these are the issues that has happened. There are typical examples, I think, in Western Europe, which happen where the grid comes to a shutdown. Now you can imagine the country that doesn't have electricity. Um, like any to load shedding, we've seen this happen and what it can do to the country, productivity and so on. So really it goes beyond WhatsApp, goes beyond social media. So we must separate the two things. There is an aspect of the actual cyber security and crime which is enormous. And then you come to the social media where now you're talking about individuals. Basically, I sit in my office or I sit in my home, I join a group, and you know, the usual communication that happens. But there are quite a number of things that are happening on the social media. Number one, um, the content that we are transmitting. There is aspects of pornography, you know, uh, sex issues and whatever it is. And you'd be able to know that within the ICT Act, it is very, very clear that such transmission is illegal. Uh, the act specifically uh, goes further talking about pornography and so on. So a situation where as all of our, most of the people go out there and transmit all sorts of obscene material, that is a crime. And once if you are found, those are some of the things that you can get you into trouble. Now, despite the pornographic and obscene material happening, there is the social aspect which deals with how um, we, 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 we we, we live every day. Um, information is power. And lately, I think I can give a typical example, um, which I saw um, about um, there's, there was an issue, a letter uh, given out on social media saying that uh, I think the Republican uh, uh, government has um, banned wearing uh, tight dresses and all sorts of things. You can imagine how that impact, uh, how it impacted most of the people first when you saw it, I was also alarmed, like, wow, you know, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it is that kind of abuse that we are talking about. You are given the power to have a platform which can be used in a good sense to promote good values, to promote um, uh, unity, to promote all these lovely uh, 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 things that comes with the well-being of living in a society. And yet we are using this platform to do quite a number of bad things, hate speech, individualization, and making sure that we hate our friends and so on. So you'd see that this platform is a powerful platform. So even from the aspect of um, uh, individual users, it becomes critical that we look into ourselves and see how best we get mannered in the utilization of this ICT platform. So those are issues that can be dangerous, not only to an individual, but it, goes, it has got far implications as far as reaching the national um, 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 uh, environment itself. So that's, those are some of the effects that, despite having a good platform to use it for good things, we are now using this platform for bad things. And all we are saying that within this country, there are laws that are quite specific in terms of content that is being provided on this lovely platform and which can land individuals into problems. Um, and some uh, goes as far as five years imprisonment, a fine of 500,000, um, as the law stipulates. So all we are appealing is that on the part of the regulator, what we are trying to get involved also is the education on the part of um, ICT users in the etiquette, in the way they are using uh, this platform to move forward so that we build one another, not only um, as individuals, but an entire nation. And if we have such a lovely platform, we can use it for the good things. And that's the intention and that's how this platform has become so important to us and obviously to the government of the day. Okay. Um, how are we faring as a country when it comes to ICTs? Um, so far, there are a number of activities, both that are happening at government level 
I think uh, you've heard things like Smart Zambia 1, Phase 1, and Smart Zambia Phase 2. Um, I think uh, our Republican uh, President, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, is very keen to see that this country transforms um, into an ICT uh, uh, environment uh, which will make sure that through ICTs the economies uh, can come up. Um, you'll be seeing that within Zikta ourselves, we've done quite a number of projects uh, to help ensuring that the ICT uh, sector moves uh, to a level which is acceptable. Currently, I think uh, we've managed um, uh, through the association with the government to build a national data center, which is one of its first kind. And um, uh, once that is commissioned, we'll be able to use to introduce um, iCloud services in the country. And um, we've also gone further uh, to ensure that things like access to ICTs within the country goes as far as the rural areas. Uh, that project keeps on going because at the end of the day, we are also very careful to ensure that we also provide ICT services or communication uh, 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 within the border areas of this country. You see, having the border areas is always a prone uh, areas for anything. Um, when it comes to enemy attack or whatever it is. So our role is to ensure that we work with the government and make sure that we move together and secure this nation in terms of also providing a platform where we see ourselves moving from where we are today. And uh, the government also has um, a lovely uh, document which is called the 2030 vision of this country. It talks about um, a country that is dependent, in short, dependent on ICTs. Um, which can also create hubs. Remember, we are located in a strategic position as a country. We are in the middle of eight SADC uh, countries, and that just gives us a competitive, um, uh, a comparative advantage uh, regardless to um, other countries that are surrounded. So basically, those are some of the things, and looking, answering you specifically, where are we? I think we are doing quite good. Um, typical examples I would mention is that now we have a national backbone, uh, which is a fiber national backbone, a 24 core fiber national backbone, which gives good capacities. Um, and the government is also working to ensure that we implement the e-government um, uh, project, and that will see that the government interaction with the citizen will be made efficient and quick, because you'd be able to do some of the government services or some of the application, passport, and so on, through um, uh, that platform. And I must also uh, mention this, that uh, through the National Registration Card, there's also a project where the NRC will be digitized or put on an electronic platform, meaning there should be connectivity in terms of databases and so on. In that also, Zikta is playing quite a role. We are helping uh, to ensure that uh, this uh, project is finalized. And we start having um, a one-off uh, card that has got so many details. And you can imagine, RATS is one area where they have done very well in terms of uh, the licensing of vehicles and, of course, uh, the licenses that we get. If you see that we have got such um, uh, databases which can be interlinked, that will provide efficiency in doing everyday life of an individual in this country. Okay, all things being equal, if we headed in the direction that we are heading, which is a good one according to you, where do you see us as a country? Um, if I look at the 2030 vision, it had a target, a vision of making sure that this country becomes um, uh, uh, an economic base in terms of uh, 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 ensuring that the country moves from where we are to that level using ICT services. And I'm very confident because being in the ICT sector, there are a number of good projects that are happening. I would think, uh, I would think that uh, come 2030, that vision will be attained. Um, and I believe um, a, 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 through collaborative work that is happening not only with Zikta, with all related uh, government agencies and the ministry involved in development um, of ICTs, there's quite a very good push in that and I'm very, very confident that come 2030, as the vision says, we should be able to reach the target as envisioned. Finally, any last words? Um, well, we are here as a regulator, and uh, I believe um, a regulator not only sustains the market, but we are also very much concerned about our consumers. 
So as a regulator, I, we are very, very, very uh, uh, um, uh, there for every person, as an individual, as a company, and whatever, to make sure that the services being provided are provided, number one, with good quality of service. But most importantly, um, as a regulator, we also set up uh, our call center, which anyone can dial in, and the numbers are 7070. And this platform is not just about getting complaints from you as, or from the um, citizens. It is also a platform that can be used for sharing information regarding uh, any difficulties, any challenges. And also we are using the same platform as well, especially when it comes to social media, things like Facebook, WhatsApp and so on, to educate citizens, especially in ensuring that configuration or setting up your, uh, uh, your handle is... Um, quite good uh, with certain privacy um, uh, parameters which are already in, ICE, uh, in Facebook that can allow and reduce some of these um, you know, aspects of bullying, aspects of uh, abuse. Um, and we'll always be there and we'll be taking care um, and moving forward to ensure that we do a number of awareness programs in that regard. So really, as a regulator, we are, uh, we are there for the market, we are there uh, for the country in ensuring and will participate entirely to ensure that this ICT sector moves from where it is today and moving along with government policy and agenda to ensure that uh, we, start, we make this country um, reach the levels that were envisioned in the 2030 vision. Mr. Mutimushi, thank you so much for your time and awarding us an opportunity to be able to speak to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Kingdom doors for security steel doors, single powder doors, double black copper, double pure copper, double glass, double powder, mother and son powder doors, mother and son black copper, mother and son pure, single chocolate, kitchen doors with ventilation, double glass doors with fan light, interior flash doors, aluminium bathroom and toilet doors, aluminium sliding windows and doors, get quality selling boards here, wallpapers, chandeliers and different assorted lighting. For more details call us today or come in person along Cafe Road next to China Mall or Metropolitan Complex. Welcome back. It's not all the time that opportunities to be in formal employment are presented to us. Sometimes we have to make the most of what we have. We take a look at some entrepreneurs who are doing just that and taking charge of their lives. And right after that, we enter into our Money Matters segment. I was born in a family of um, eight. I am the fifth born. Um, I started my business some time back. But before starting, I also worked. Um, I went to Thorn Park Primary School for my primary level from grade one to grade seven. Then I proceeded my secondary school at uh, Kamala High School. Um, when I completed, I didn't have the chance to go to college or university. So I started working at the age of 19. I worked for two years in a butchery and then I worked for a year at a restaurant. While I was working, I gained some experience and um, as time went by, I got interested in using my talent because I'm good at food, at cooking, and I thought uh, working alone won't help me. Let me go after my dreams. And then that's how I stopped working and I came up with my business plan. I started from home actually. I used to cook chili in a big pot, putting bottles and supply to butcheries. And as time went by, when I made my money, I found a shop here at Matibeto Market in the year 2007. That's how long I've been here. And from there, business has been okay. Yeah, so far so good though. Sometimes we do face challenges. Yes, they are there. It's, um, this market is very competitive. Uh, when I first started, we are only about eight shops, but now we are more than 30 shops. So it's quite challenging to convince new clients on how you prepare food for them to come in and have a meal to eat. Yep. So with prayers and focusing, hard work, I've made it. I've been here for 10 years. 
and I've managed to pay my bills, I've managed to take my kids to school. Um, I'm 40 years old now and I'm still strong, I'm still working. This is my second restaurant and I hope to open up another more, others actually, maybe three or four. By the time I'm 50, I'll be settled. My kids enjoy my work. I love what I'm doing. I love it very much. I do it with passion because that's my talent. One thing I would like to advise the youth out there, especially the young ladies, don't go into something that you don't enjoy doing because it won't last. I've seen, ever since I've been here, many people come and they open up a shop at Matereto thinking we are making a lot of money, you know. They think, oh, if I open up a shop at Matereto, I'll make money. Not knowing, they're not doing the talent, what's in them. I'm doing what is in me, it's my talent, and I love it, I enjoy what I'm doing. I do it with passion. Even when I'm roasting my T-bone, everyone will be wondering, wow, well, Auntie Betty, how do you do it? I can't do it the way you do it. I do it with passion. I love what I'm doing. Don't start something that you don't love what you're doing. You will never last in it. You come into this place, you run your restaurant for two, three months, you close it down. Do what you love to do. I love my work. It's a challenge, it's, it's good, it's very competitive, but you learn every day. You grow in, in everything. Yes, I do. I spend my time um, listening to motivational speakers like John Banda. I check his uh, messages on WhatsApp. I get encouraged. I go to business seminars once in a while when I have time and I learn from there. I spend my time with people who are running businesses, people who have made it, big people in business. I don't find myself with uh, people who can't tell me, what, you know, can't give me ad my advice in my business. So I mingle with those who encourage me and, you know, teach me, give me ideas on how to grow. And it has worked for me. Um, I have three lovely children. My firstborn is 20, he's a boy, and uh, my second is 17, my third is 13. My firstborn is at Nortec College. My second born daughter, she's at uh, Lusaka Girls and my third born son is at uh, Lusaka Boys. In the next five years, I see myself having my own big restaurant. Because right now, I'm renting out the two. I pray and I trust in God that I'm gonna have my own big restaurant. My word of encouragement to the other young ladies out there is that work hard. Working hard is the only key. You know, it's a challenge for you to wake up every morning and do what you're doing. Others cannot wake up at 06 to go out and work, but I'm here. By 7 o'clock, I wake up every day. Whether it's cold, it's hot, I have to be here. It's job, it's my work. So it's a challenge waking up in the morning. And I'd like to advise the young ladies not to depend on just working. You can work, yes, and at the other hand, you can do some other businesses. I've seen ladies who are working. After 17, they're doing their other business. So it's good, they are balancing, you know. You don't just go to school to do, um, to work for a white collar job. You can also do other businesses. Use your talent. Everyone has a skill, everyone has a talent. Just use it. I mean, work wonders. I have uh, seven in four years. I have um, six girls and one boy, one young man. Yes. They're all working for me, they're helping me. I can't do this alone. It's, a, it's involving, very, very involving. So I have seven workers that are helping me around. And we work as a team, yes. It hasn't been all perfect for me for the 10 years, for the past 10 years, no. I've had a, a fall back, I, I get up, a fall back, I get up. It hasn't been easy, but I never gave up. That is why I am still standing today. So don't give up. Go out for your dreams, catch your dreams, and you will make it. Five years from now, you'll see me in a different place, with a bigger place. Thank you. So as you all have already said, today is a first on the market. We are launching something extremely exciting and as Stambik Bank and as MTN, we are very, very happy to be launching Bank for Free. And I know that both Charles and Charles 
and the governor will go into the details of what Bank for Free is all about uh, and we'll go straight into the program. So please allow me in welcoming Mr. Charles Molapisi to come and give his remarks. MTN Zambia Limited is Zambia's leading communication solutions provider. We offer data, fixed and wireless internet, mobile financial services, as well as voice and SMS services. MTN Zambia and Stand Big Bank Zambia are both involved in improving the lives of millions of people across Zambia and beyond. They, or should I say we, are both giants in our respective sectors and we continue to set the pace because we offer products that are innovative, that are diverse, and that are inclusive. This partnership shows that both MTN and Standvik understand that competition makes us faster, but collaboration makes us better. MTN is a partner. We are not a competitor in the, for the financial sector. For example, our mobile money service, what we call the Momo service, is a financial service targeted at unbanked and is designed to bring them into the mainstream of the financial sector. At the moment, with our mobile money service, we are able to facilitate services such as mobile money transfer, ability to save money for our people to be able to pay bills, and we even provide micro loans or short term loans. We are not a competitor for the banks, but we are an enabler because we help banks get to the rich and places where they are not able to. Please know that all our products and services are designed and developed to make life better for our customers across various segments. This ranges from fresh out of school youth to the pensioner, from the micro SME to a multinational corporation, we as MTN offer solutions to empower your life at every stage. Today, in order to increase our scope of services, while simultaneously working towards financial inclusion beyond our mobile money services, we are launching the first bank for free service in Zambia. I think we should clear for that. Partnerships are what makes life go better. Because we are all by nature bound to work together and to be part of a community. Human beings since time immemorial have always been communal in the things that we do. And we work together as teams, as families, as communities, as nations, as a human race. And the aspiration is to make us better in the things that we do and to look forward to becoming better and better. As we try and work hard to make Zambia grow because it is our home, we start to think about how can we build stronger partnerships and look for areas of collaboration that can make us a better country. But we also realize that the one thing that we have to deal with as a country is about poverty alleviation and how do we enable the broader masses of our country to access financial services but also to be enjoying the benefits of the modern digital world. And if you look at those two twin objectives, being in the modern digital world and access financial services, that is the future aspiration of many nations, including ours. And it's in this light that you've got the two very strong brands in Zambia teaming up together to create a combination that will assist the majority of our country to access both digital technology and banking services simultaneously. I think it's a wonderful combination. Kingdom doors for security steel doors, single powder doors, double black copper, double pure copper, double glass, double
double powder, mother and son powder dose, mother and son black copper, mother and son pure, single chocolate, kitchen doors with ventilation, double glass doors with fan light, interior flash doors, aluminium bathroom and toilet doors, aluminium sliding windows and doors. Get quality selling boards here, wallpapers, chandeliers and different assorted lighting. For more details, call us today or come in person along Kafir Road next to China Mall or Metropolitan Complex. We have now come to the end of another exciting edition of the Kwacha Making Program. Remember, this program is tailor-made for entrepreneurs, those aspiring to be, and already established ones. I have been your host, Liseli Kanyanga. Join me next time for another exciting edition. <laughs>